Seagate Free Agent Pro. These are older models. Um, I don't know what models they actually have out these days. Uh, that's a product number 10045 It's a 500 gig in my case. I've got three of these. One, two, three. In a very messy desk right now. Um, problem. Two of my power supplies have gone bad. I've got three, like I said, and one of the power supplies is different than the other two. So that makes me believe that they either changed power supply designs at some point, or that power supply was re replaced because I got these uh, used. Actually, at a thrift store, they had them all for like 20 bucks. So I was like, uh, okay, I'll take those. It was years ago. Um, yeah, one of the power supplies is different, and that's the one that works now. Because as of last night, two power supplies have gone dead. So, one of them went out like a month ago, and I knew it was the supply because I, you know, swapped power supplies, and all of a sudden the drive that wasn't working was working. So that's cool. Um, anyway, so now I've got two definitely dead power supplies. They both read 24 volts, which is what they're supposed to read, but they're obviously not putting out two amps like they're supposed to because the drive kind of. If you listen close with these power supplies went out, they kind of go whoop, tick, 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 tick. it kind of sounds like they're like not quite powering on, they keep trying, which sounds like the drive is dead or something. Sounds like you've got some stuck heads in your in the actual hard drive in there, but that's not the case. So, you need to crack your power supply open. These are the ones that died. And cracking them open is very hard. <laughs> or I guess it's very easy if you have a Dremel, but it's a pain in the butt. Um, also, I apologize. I am sick right now. So I sound stupid, I bet. And I'm probably really annoying. Anyway, so you Dremel all the way around the case. Or in my case, I dremeled slots, and then I tried to pry it open with a screwdriver. I was thinking I could just crack the plastic, or crack the glue. Nope. Not at all. They are really glued. I ended up just having to dremel it anyway. It looks disgusting from all the prying that I attempted. Anyway. You gotta get them open. These are not broken, by the way. They are little spring-loaded contacts that contact on the board right here. The problem is, you want to guess? Capacitors. It's capacitors. Yes! These two, right here on this side, I believe those are the only two that way. Yep. Those are popped. They are no longer flat on the top. They have not started like leaking all over the place. Or they didn't pop with a uh, great force, but they are no good. And that would make sense, since this power supply was still putting out 24 volts. It's kind of still doing its job, but it just can't handle the draw that that is asking of it. So, yeah. I'm willing to bet that that's the problem. So I will replace these, and we will see if it works. And just for the record, here is the other one. There's the first one. And they are popped on that one too. These are actually a little leaky. Or previously leaky. Yep. That's the problem. Um, and little pro tip here. There's this glue on the back I forgot about. First one was pretty easy to pop out, but the second one was a pain. And that holds it into this half of it. So, it's not, it might not be as easy as you think to just pull it out of there once you got it cut open. I had to use some pliers and grab very carefully right here, since there's no circuit there, and just kind of pull hard. <laughs> carefully. Yeah, so, looks like I have to put four capacitors in. Disclaimer, before you do any of this, uh, if you just plug this power supply in and you're going to fix it and you take it apart, wait a little while 
before you take it apart. I don't want you to shock yourself and then blame me, so yeah. There's a big capacitor on here that could hurt a lot. Yes, be careful. All right, I got one of them taken out. They are in fact 330 microfarad, 25 volt. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those here, but I do have some 470s and some 220s. And that will work for me, and I'll show you why. These are wired in parallel, so there's one capacitor, boop, 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 boop. There's the other one, that's what I took out. And since they are wired, the, the parallels basically they're on top of each other, so you just combine them into one. They probably use one or two capacitors instead of one. I don't know, for size reasons, they could fit two here, but they couldn't fit one big one, you know? Whatever, I don't know. There's probably other reasons that I don't know. Anyway, so I'm gonna put a 470 and a 220 in there. Um, and that will be 690 microfarads total. So that's only 60, or sorry, 30 more than the original spec. And I also think the ones that I'm going to put in here, I think I have room for some 35 volt capacitors, which will be a little bit bigger in diameter. But they should fit, and that might give me a little extra headroom. I don't know. Put those in now. Alright, first power supply is dead. There's the 470 and the 220. These are not good capacitors. I mean, they're, they are good, but they are not nice. Uh, they're just like cheap elite brand, I think. They came from a uh, some old TV mainboard that had a bad chip on it. Um, so I know the capacitors are good. Or they should be, hopefully. Anyway, I expect them to outlast the drive, I'd imagine. So let's test it out. Okay, we got plugged in down here. So that one, still not glued. We'll plug it into the drive. And turn the drive on. Got nothing. Oh, oh, there it goes. Well, the light's staying solid. The light used to kind of blink. Uh, you probably wouldn't even be able to see it in the camera if it was blinking. And it sounds like it's spinning just fine. So let's plug in the uh, eSATA too. All right, I got the eSATA plugged in, and it's not going to recognize it immediately. So I need to scan for hardware changes. Yeah, there's some stuff that isn't doesn't have drive. Oh, hey there, L drive, so sweet, it works, it's actually a backup drive, so, <laughs> yep, I fixed the power supply, now all I have to do is fix the other one, where did it go, I lost it, something that you will probably come across, well, in any capacitor adventure, is this rubber glue stuff um, and it's just there to hold them steady I think when they're getting soldered in the factory maybe I don't know I don't remember what, what that stuff's for anyway you just need to cut it out cut out the capacitor very carefully and here's the second one all right I've got the other one plugged in and it is working like a charm Absolutely perfect. So, uh, recap. Huh, pun. Yet. Uh, I recapped this power supply. These two power supplies. They had 330 microfarad uh, 25 volt capacitors in them on that one side. Two of them each. I replaced them with a 470 and a 220 because they were wired in parallel, and it's not the exact same 
end result, but it's close enough, especially for me, who doesn't really care at all, as long as it works. <laughs> um, so, if you have one of these drives, and it seems to be dead, it's kind of clicking a little bit and won't show up, it might just be the power supply, and you can either replace the power supply, or if you're handy or crazy, you can replace these. Yep. Thanks for watching.